I remember the horrific memories that'll haunt me for the rest of my life like it was yesterday. It all started when I was brushing my teeth in the middle of the night, just before getting ready for the movie I had planned to watch, when I happened to get a phone call from my old pal Patrick. Hello? You reached SpongeBob SquarePants? Hey, SpongeBob. Do you have any leftover sausages? Leftover sausages? Uh, no, Patrick. Barnacles, you want to come over and find some with me? Patrick, it's the middle of the night. I'm not going out. I'm watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy tonight. I don't want to be interrupted again. I would have liked to meet up with Patrick that night, but he should have called me four or five hours earlier. It's just that he's never understood what it's like to have a job where you need to be somewhere in the morning. Of course, I've known this for years, so I shrugged it off and kept on brushing my teeth, which is when I saw the strangest thing. I looked back at the mirror and saw the reflection of Patrick standing right behind me. I spat out the combination of toothpaste, saliva, and other pieces of food stuck between my teeth all over the mirror. P -p patrick is that you? I quickly turned around, but he was suddenly gone. All that there was was my pet snail, Gary, waiting for me to go with him to the living room. Don't scare me like that, Gary! It's freaking 1 a.m. Just meet me in the living room and, and make sure there's enough food ready. I'm so excited to watch Late Night Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. A little while after that first scare, I was finally in the living room eating my dinner and watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. How is it, Gary? Tastes good, right? I seasoned it myself. It's not sushi, damn it! It's leftover meat that I brought home from the Krusty Krab! It's so juicy and scrumptious! Oh. Shut up! It's not sushi! Oh. <sighs> well, you're putting me on edge, you idiot! If you want me to calm down, why don't you stop pestering me and get me a drink? Oh. All I was trying to do that night was relax, but it seemed like everyone <sighs> in Bikini Bottom was trying to disturb my peace. Oh. <laughs> Squidward must be watching another one of those sissy chick flicks again. Ah! Squidward! Cut it out, you big crybaby! I returned to my seat as Gary arrived with a beer. <sighs> That's the stuff. Well... Yeah, I'm coping with a drink or two. So what? Well... No way! I'm not calling her and I'm not taking her back! They don't call her Sandy Cheeks for nothing, you know. She ran herself through all a bikini bottom. Yes, I showered when I was with her. Meow. Yes, I cleaned my holes when I was with her. Meow. Leave me alone or I'm gonna turn you into escargot! I know it may seem like it, but my memory of that night is crystal clear. I very much remember only getting about 20 minutes to myself before Gary came back to bother me yet again. Meow. What, Gary? Meow. Hear what? Meow. It's probably just the TV or Squidward crying over one of his girly movies again. Don't worry about it. Ah, look! The TV's off! And listen, not a sound- <gasps> That sounds like Patrick. Just that moment, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. I thought it was Patrick running past around the corner, but I knew that couldn't be the case. There was no way he could be in my house. He was at home. I'd just been on the phone with him a few minutes ago. It, it couldn't be. But then again, I couldn't deny that I could hear him laughing from inside my house. It was the door to my library. I got up to check on it. When I opened the door, it was pitch black inside. I stepped inside and flipped on the lights. Then, I saw him right there, sitting in my reading chair at the bottom of the bookshelf slide. There was definitely something off about him, but I couldn't pinpoint what it was. That's when I said, Patrick, what are you doing in here? How did you even get in here? Never mind all that, SpongeBob. Come on, slide down here. I have something to show you. Tell me what it is first. Oh, don't be like that, SpongeBob. Trust me, I think you'll find this very interesting. It's something that might have led to Sandy breaking up with you. You're lying. Am I? Fine. I reluctantly slid down the slide to meet him. He had this disturbing <gasps> smile plastered on his face. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what this was. Or if it was some kind of sick joke. I remember seeing him holding a very familiar box in his lap. Recognize this, SpongeBob? 
The box? Yeah, it's your secret box. The one with just the string in it, right? Yes, but it holds something else now. Something even more special than that. Wanna see? <laughs> uh, Alright, Patrick. Let's see what's in it this time. Something inside me told me not to open it, but Patrick was staring at me with those eyes like I'd never seen before. I knew I had to, or he would never leave, but nothing could have prepared me for what I saw inside that box. Ah! It's Squidward's nose! <laughs> Spongebob, run for your life! I've only ever had two neighbors since I moved into my own pineapple. There's always been Squidward, the obnoxious, nosy neighbor, and Patrick, the dumb one who's so stupid that he doesn't even live in a real house. My options for friends were limited, so I ended up making the choice to befriend the town moron, but the more I got to know Patrick, the more he surprised me. He's not nearly as dumb as he seems. Everybody knows he lives under a rock, and I'm sure everybody has a million questions about how that works. Where does he sleep? Where does he cook? Where does he go to the bathroom? Well, in reality, the answer to all that is connected to what's probably the biggest conspiracy in all of Bikini Bottom, and I'm involved in more than just covering it up. Patrick and I rolled together for years, which made everyone think I was just as stupid as him, but I'm not. I don't crap on my own floor and bury it in the sand like that filthy starfish, but in all this time I've known him, I've buried more than just a few hatchets alongside him. However, as time went on, I began to realize I couldn't keep hanging out with him. I was only ever his friend because nobody else would be my friend, and for that reason, I've been slowly creating distance. Unfortunately, that's a lot easier said than done. Recently, Patrick's been catching on to my game, and it's been upsetting him. Just the other night, I was deep asleep in bed when I was woken up by someone banging on my door. It was Patrick, of course, and he was willing to wake up all of Bikini Bottom just to get to me. SpongeBob, buddy! Come on! Wake up! Let's do this! I tried to wait a few minutes to see if he would give up and go away, but that only worked the first few times, not this time. I know you're awake, SpongeBob! Don't leave me hanging! I know you can hear me! I'm not leaving without you! I knew at that point that he would never leave unless I went down there to talk to him, so I dragged myself out of bed and shuffled down downstairs to the front door. When I opened it, I was taken aback by the look on Patrick's face. He was holding a jellyfish net, and when he comes to my door in the middle of the night with one of those, I know what it means. Hey, SpongeBob, wanna go jellyfishing? <sighs> No, Patrick, I can't. Yes, you can. Come on. What's stopping you? It's late, Pat. Can't we do this in the morning? No, no, Sponge. You know we can't. Listen to me. I don't want to do this nighttime jellyfishing anymore. I want to retire from it. How can you say that? We've got such a good thing going, and you're going to make me go back to doing it myself? Look, I'm sorry, but I just don't think the late night jellyfishing life is for me anymore. I'm getting too old, Patrick. I have to focus on my career at the Krusty Krab. Liar! You know you could quit that crummy job in a heartbeat if you just went to work with me. You're choosing to abandon the best opportunity you'll ever have. Why? Because it's wrong, Patrick. It's evil. You are evil. I see. It wasn't wrong when we were doing it together, but now that you don't want to be friends with me anymore, all of a sudden it's evil. I can't believe you, SpongeBob. You better believe it, Patrick. So these are your true colors, huh, buddy? You're a traitor. I'm not betraying you. I'm just moving on. You can't move on. Uh, I won't let you. You better crap your nut and come, or you're gonna realize how big of a mistake you're really making right now. Leave me alone, or I'm calling the cops! I tried to slam the door in his face, but he wedged his foot underneath it, barred <gasps> straight in. I then ran for my life as he chased me into my house. He was close behind me the whole time. Had he gotten a hold of me, he would have tried to kill me without a doubt. I'm sure he wouldn't have even hesitated either. But luckily, I was able to get around a corner and lose him by hiding someplace I knew he'd never seen me before. Oh, SpongeBob, where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. 
I held my breath in silence for an eternity before he finally gave up and left. I waited to make sure he wasn't coming back. Then, I crawled out from my hiding spot and went to my bedroom window to watch him head into town. You see, nighttime jellyfishing is nothing like regular jellyfishing. It doesn't take place in the fields, but on the streets of Bikini Bottom itself, and it doesn't have anything to do with jellyfish at all. A few hours later, Patrick returned with his net sagging with the bounty of a successful trip. The poor soul that he managed to capture, a bound and gagged fish that never saw it coming. Patrick lifted up his rock, looked around one last time, then disappeared beneath it with his newest toy in tow. Nobody on the ocean floor but me and Patrick knows what lies below his rock. Most people think he lives in a barren, dirty hole in the ground, but in reality, that's just the facade for something far greater. With the flip of a switch, he can reveal a hidden tube from the floor, drop his victim inside, watch them get sucked underground, then flip the switch again and make the whole thing disappear. As for the destination of that tube, well, I've only seen it a few times, but you'd be utterly shocked to find out just how many sea creatures live underground as Patrick's captives. It's almost an entire city where all the citizens are subservient to him, giving him everything he wants, even if it's their own flesh for him to snack on. Admittedly, I've added to the population myself, and of course taken part in the spoils as well, but he eventually came to realize the depth of the evil I was committing, and now all I want to do is forget that I ever contributed to something so awful. There once was a starfish that lived under a rock in a small town called Bikini Bottom, below the depths of the deepest ocean on Earth. The starfish was named Patrick Star, but the only thing he was famous for was his incredible stupidity. The entire town believed without a doubt that the starfish had the lowest IQ out of all the sea creatures, and, of course, none of them were nice about it. Patrick Star's only friend was his neighbor just two doors down, a filter feeder named SpongeBob SquarePants, who just so happened to live in none other than the finest of pineapples. SpongeBob knew Patrick better than anyone, but unlike the rest of the townsfolk, SpongeBob didn't believe that Patrick was dumb at all. No, SpongeBob was convinced that Patrick was actually a liar. Nobody could be that stupid, he thought. And in all the years they hung out together, he could have sworn he saw the deceptive starfish slip up at least once or twice. Even for somebody as supposedly idiotic as Patrick, literally living under a rock simply seemed too ridiculous to be true. The curiosity burned within him for ages, building and building, till one day he couldn't accept not knowing for sure any longer. And on that day, the very starfish in question invited Spongebob over for dinner. At this moment in time, Spongebob had plans to make this his moment to finally expose the true nature of the notoriously moronic Patrick Star. Patrick, I'm ready to eat now. Uh... I'd appreciate it if you put some pep in your step, Patrick. If you're so hungry, then go make some Krabby Patties at the Krusty Krab! It's Sunday, Patrick. We're closed. This ain't no damn McDonald's! You'll work for Mr. Krabs! You never stop working! You gonna pay me, Conehead? I'll make you dinner. Just be patient before I make another hole in you with my- Make me some food, dammit! I could have been at home watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy! Or at the very least, be clapping Sandy Cheeks' cheeks! You mean you're gonna applaud Sandy's face? You know what I'm talking about, you moron. But I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> yes, you do. You always act like the biggest idiot in town. What do you get out of it? 
Get out of what? My trousers? No, not that, you idiot! Hey, SpongeBob. I didn't know you were such a bossy guest. I'm not being bossy, Patrick. I'm just, look, we're friends, aren't we? Yes, yeah, SpongeBob. And friends are always 100% honest with each other, right? Yes, yeah, SpongeBob. So, if you were actually not as dumb as everyone thinks you are, would you tell me? Yes, yeah, SpongeBob. So... So what? So, is it all an act? Like, were you faking this whole time? <laughs> I'm not your ex, SpongeBob. Oh, tartar sauce! Just feed me already! Then feast your eyes on this! What the hell is this? Calm down, SpongeBob. I'm on a budget! You did it on purpose! You're playing dumb again! I've had it with you! I'm putting an end to this charade and finding out once and for all! But I swear I'm not- I'm gonna find out once and for all what you're hiding in that pink cone! I uh, don't keep anything in there! Uh, it's empty, I swear! Lies! I bet you there's a million slave starfish bending to your will! giving their all to prop up your mental facilities. All so you can do what with it? Nothing! Nothing at all! It's a disgrace I will stand for no longer! SpongeBob, you're scaring me! I don't know what you're saying! Shut up and hold still! Come on, come on! There's gotta be something in there! Where is it? Where is it? Stop! Stop it! Stop squirming, you pansy! I want help! It hurts! This wouldn't be happening if you You've just been honest with me. Now you regret it, don't you? I'm oh, sorry. I'll do whatever you want. Just stop it. It's too late for that, Patrick. This is what you get. I think I feel something in there. Where'd it go? There it is. Now I've got you. <gasps> oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> And so goes the tale of how there once was a starfish named Patrick Star who lived under a rock. He was always believed to be the stupidest moron in all of Bikini Bottom, until his very best friend in the entire world took him for a dirty, rotten liar. And now, nobody will ever know how smart Patrick Star could have been. Hopefully, if nothing else, Mr. Squarepants will learn a lesson from this, that you should probably just believe your friends when they say they're telling you the truth. At the very least, don't try to tear someone's heart out. <laughs>